Eileen Sorkin, the original Harley Quinn from the DC Animated Universe. And you're listening to Comic Book Central, where comic books come to life. Isn't that nice? Hear, hear. <laughs> I'm proud of it. I mean, did I did I know when I did it that it was going to be the thing that I would be remembered for? I mean, no. But now here it is, and I love it. I didn't. I, I, uh, and I, and the fact that that it's mostly that you're letting me do this recording as opposed to you know I can, I can get old. I can whatever, you know, <laughs> and still be able to you know give a little bit of Harley. But this time, baby. The joke's on you. Well, I mean, everybody was reacted so positively, and I was, and I, everybody, like Mark Hamill, everyone was so nice to me, and so I, I felt very comfortable right away, you know, you know, very accepted, and I really didn't have any experience. In, I'd done, you know, lots of commercials, voiceover commercials, but I really hadn't done animation, so it was... Now, Andrea really made me comfortable. In every generation, there there is a character that talks like this. <laughs> In every generation, you know, there was Vivian Blaine. There was uh, anyone who ever played um, Adelaide from Adelaide's Lament. Anyone who did, you know, on private words from, you know, that kind of accent that Barbara Streisand did. It's like Betty Everybody Boop. Did Betty Boop played... come into it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and you just have to say, you know, in every generation, there's always no telling you and talking like this, you know. I mean, every generation. But then again, a lot of people listen to me and say, oh my God, there's so much of Harley Quinn in her. <laughs> Were you influenced by comedians when you were growing up? Like, what oh, were you watching? Absolutely, absolutely. Are you kidding? I mean, comedians. Uh, I love them. You know, uh, and then my uh, when I was nine, one of my partners did the great impression of Gracie Allen, and I, there was so much of her material that I thought was hilarious. And then, you know, I auditioned for Little Shop of Horrors. I really think that Ellen Green was a big part of Harley Quinn, mm. you know, because I was such a fan of hers. But, I mean, there's no question that in every generation there's somebody that does it. You know, until you said Gracie Allen, I, that didn't even dawn on me. But now I'm hearing it. Have you, um, have you done much of this tutoring? Oh, quite a bit, Mrs. Burns. I work mostly with students who have fallen behind. Oh, well, George isn't like that. He may sag a little in front, but he's got a fine figure. Paul Dini and I went to college together at Emerson in, in Boston. And it was he was homesick one day, right, Paul? Yep, yeah. He was homesick and he saw me on Days of Our Lives and I was playing a court jester uh, as a... As a like a tribute to, uh, I, no, I know what it was. It was in a fantasy scene. Yeah, I like came in. I came into work and I said, "Why don't we on days do a takeoff on Princess Bride?" And so the next day, all you know, I don't know when it happened. A couple of days later, we were all dressed up as characters, and I was a court jester, and Paul was home. And he said, thank God, he had a day off from work, and he saw it, and he came up with the idea of, of Harley Quinn. That was a lucky day for me. Yeah, it was great. I mean, Calliope Jones, was that the name of the character? Yeah, that was Calliope, yeah. There's a video online uh, that I've seen, and it's it's amazing how similar it is to what Harley became. It's really cool. I, and, you know, I still have those those pants with the moon on them. I had to shoot the moon, and I, I mooned him. Yeah. And, it, and I have them. I want to auction them off for, for some charity. I don't know what. There are some cosplayer out there who will buy them. They'll they'll mortgage their house to, to, to have the original have a, Harley. And I have a picture of me that day, dressed as a court jester. Those 
fans can know that it's out there if they want to, you know, bet on it. When I wrote the episode Joker's Favor, I was thinking it would be fun to put in a female hench person for the Joker to, you know, interact with. And then I somehow got the idea that she should be funny because the Joker is always looking for approval from his guys. And if he doesn't get it, he usually throws one under a bus. And then I thought, well, it might be funny if the girl in the group gets the laugh and that makes the Joker really angry. Not so angry that he's going to kill her, but it's just, it, you don't often see the Joker, you know, one-upped. And I put it in and everybody seemed to like it. And then they said, who do you think for this uh, Harley Quinn character? And I suggested Arlene because, you know, I had been, you know, I had watched her on TV and I thought it all sort of came together around that time. And I thought, well, um, you know, how about Arlene? It's just sort of the inspiration for the character. She has that personality. I think of her as sort of Harley as sort of a peppy, upbeat, Judy uh, holiday type. And so Andrea Romano was up for it and they had never worked together, but Arlene came in to uh, do the recording and, and everybody just realized she hit it out of the park. And the character became very funny and very unlike anything in Batman at that time. My father was a big believer that nobody should be ignored. Everybody should be, you know, if they did something spectacular, they should be remembered. And I started a website called Come See My Stuff. Does everyone know about it? Do you know about it? These are like the collectible, like collectibles of the celebrities. Yeah, Is that right? I, but but I think people the collecting should not be ignored. I mean, you know, if you really painstakingly collect something, so a light should be shined on you. So that's why I started the website. You know, when I would go to the Comic Con, I that would be the only time I would really get. So Harley Quinn made an impact. And once I went to the Comic-Con in in New York, and I accidentally, you know, when I turned it over, the maquette to sign it, I knocked an ear off. <gasps> and I swear to God, I was like, I was going to, look at your sign. There's eight million of them. You could buy another one. No, he was, like, I had to. I felt so bad. I couldn't come. This was a Harley, like one of these Warner Brothers. Harley Quinn maquette. Like these expensive, like three, four, five hundred dollar things. Yeah, but but still. <laughs> but still. but it was damaged by Harley Quinn, so doesn't that make I it even more collectible? Him a new one. <laughs> I hope he's listening and he sees that. Yeah. But I offered to buy him one. I offer, I swear to God, I was he upset? I on any what? Was he upset? He was. Yeah, very <laughs> upset. Gotta be grateful for everything. I mean, I feel like, you know, I hope the people that are listening, you know, I am not well, and I and I feel like the, the, there is positive that's come from it. That I really appreciate everything that's good in my life, and I think about what I'm grateful for every second. And and for anybody out there that's depressed. Think about what you're grateful for, and you'll feel better, I promise. I, I, I think about what do I do well and easily, and uh, then I went to that voice. I mean, I would like to tell you that I have a giant range, <laughs> and uh, I don't. I don't think I do, but also you have to give a ton of credit to Andrew Romano mm -hmm. because, you know, she guides you with such a strong hand that you, you can't fail. You can't fail. You feel like you're in really safe hands. This is vo the voice director, the voice director, yeah, Andrew yeah. Romano. Andrew Romano. Okay, so when you go in, is the voice we hear in that initial episode... Uh, Joker's favor is the voice that we hear. Is that the voice you started with, or did you work on it with Andrea and Paul and and find the voice? I started without the accent, and the next time I did it, I did it with the accent. Everybody loved it. It proved to be hard. I mean, the reason, that, like, I think the girls that are doing Harley are great. 
But part of my health problem is that I get, I'm get i afraid that I'll get tired. Mm-hmm. And so, and I don't want to, I don't want to, I mean, I, 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 the other day I talked to Bruce too, I was, I was like one take circuit, mostly. I mean, not perfect. Back Nobody in the day, is, you mean? But back in the when you were doing the Back in the, the day, I, you know, I I didn't I didn't give them a lot of trouble. Or pro- <laughs> it was pretty effortless for me. It was during the riots, and we were recording a, a Batman, and on the ride home there were fires. It was, and I was trying to calm Paul down. Paul was nervous about the riots, and so I'm singing in the car, and I sang that song. I was hoping it would make him laugh, and he obviously he loved it because he put it in the show. I was on a show called Duet at the time, and I had pitched to the creators of that show that hardly got, not hardly, was my character's name was Geneva, got, mm-hmm. got, you know, accidentally shoplifted, and I told it to Paul, and he's and the, the creators of Duet said, you look at me like I was insane, and Paul said, I can make something out of that. Oh, yeah, that was Harlequinade, yeah, this, the, where, where Harley accidentally walks off with a dress and sets off an alarm, and she doesn't mean to steal it, but it, it, uh, it just uh, sets in, in motion a chain of events. That was like a screwball comedy. Well, I, so at one point I said that I'm the only person that has seen the Joker cry. And so I have a soft spot for him. I have, I've seen him when he lets down his guard. Nobody else has. Well, I knew him socially because I used to have a boyfriend named Charlie Wessler, who went on to produce, you know, Dumb and Dumber, and there's something about Mary. Anyway, and he was friends with Mark Campbell because he worked on the Star Wars movies. Okay. Yeah, so you knew who uh, Mark Hamill was, and so he's like, okay, you're going to... Of course, we were friends. Yeah. I knew him, I knew Mary Lou. I, I loved them the first time I met them. They were incredible. Okay. I mean, just incredible people. I was wildly, wildly impressed with her. From the very first time we did the voices, I I was blown away by what she did. And uh, I really didn't have a relationship with her until now. And now I do, and I've, get, I've gotten to meet her and see what an amazing woman she is. I feel like we will, we will be friends forever. Sometimes I would be so in awe of them, I would forget to pick up my lines. <laughs> I mean, to watch Mark Hamill standing and doing this, I thought he was the best actor I ever worked with. I'm sorry to everyone else, but he, he really, he was, to watch him was mesmerizing. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, 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 I really would be in awe of him. You know, everyone that worked, you know, the, that everyone that works on the show was really, really incredible. To watch them act. I thought she was good. I mean, you know, but I I can't get past wanting her to have the skills, the flipping skills for real, like the Olympics girls. I love Tara. I think she's a great actress. The the legacy of Harley is in good hands. In very good hands. Is there any chance we could we could see you coming back as Harley maybe for a video game or possibly in some other capacity? I don't know. Yeah, I, I think I could do a video game. Okay. I think you could do it. I think you can do it. Um, I would love to play a video game hearing you. I would love to see an animated feature. Uh, look, they're bringing everybody back, so that'd be kind of cool if you and Diane could get back together and do maybe even a Harley and Ivy movie. That's a great idea. We love your contribution to the creation of this iconic character. Man, this is so cool. Thank you for helping to bring Harley Quinn to life, and thank you for joining me on Comic Book Central. Thank you very much. Bye, Puddin! Hey, heroes, watch your step!
I'm enormously uh, uh, fond of Arlene Sorkin. And people have to understand, when she came in to do that first episode, she had no name. It was just like, you know, Joker, henchwench number one. She wasn't called Harley Quinn or anything. And she came in with that off-the-wall Judy Holiday delivery. Thanks, Mr. J. And we all just were, we just adored her. We just all fell in love with her. 